Another significant group of functions that you can call on particular types of RDDs are provided by the pair RDD functions. So the double RDD functions allowed you to do things on RDDs of doubles. The pair RDD functions allows you to do special things with RDDs that are of a two-tuple. So we refer to it as a key and a value. In some ways, these kind of resemble the things that you would do with maps in normal Scala collections, but there are some differences. For example, normally in a map, each key only occurs once. But in a pair RDD, this is just a normal RDD, the same key can occur many times, generally with different values. Now, this type of data grouping is very fundamental to big data processing, so much so that Hadoop itself, the MapReduce algorithm, was based on this type of data, data that had keys and values associated with each other. So what types of functions can we do? Well, you'll see there are these aggregate by key is one. There's a whole slew of them here. We'll run through some of the, some of the main ones. Aggregate by key is a function that allows you to do a normal aggregate type of, of um, functionality, but you do it only on the values that are associated with a particular key. So once again, we're assuming here there are going to be many entries for a particular key, and you just want to run through all the values associated with those keys, and then do the standard aggregation where you run through one sequential operation and then a combine operation to build an end result. But what you get back, whereas a normal aggregate gives you back one value for the entire RDD, this gives you back a new RDD that has one entry for each key. So it will be collapsed. Every key, every key will only occur once in the result of this with whatever value that we had. Now we'll go through an example using this and we'll get like say the, the average temperature for years in our data set. Um, similar to that, there is a fold by key which has the same limitations of fold. It only works with things of the same type, but for that reason it only needs one function, and it behaves very much like a simplified version of aggregate. There is a group by key, which gives you back an iterable of the values on that key. Now, this feels a lot like group by, uh, which exists on the plain RDDs. We'll actually talk a bit about why the all of these by key methods are actually very handy uh, and can be much more efficient in in a, a one or two videos. In addition to uh, to those operations, there's also a number, and then I guess a reduce is very similar to a fold. So fold, reduce, and aggregate, things that we're used to, but they're all now by key. So you get separate values for each key. There are also a number of methods on here that group together multiple RDDs. So there is there's these co-group functions, and the simplest one of those would be, let's see, this one right here. It just takes another RDD, which has the same key type, but a different value type. And then it produces a result that has that key and then a tuple with all of the values from the first RDD and all of the values from the second RDD in two separate iterables. Okay, so that's what cogroup does. There is also a kind of shortened version of called group with that's just an alias for doing cogroups. There are also methods of that work kind of like the standard joins in databases. So you see join here. This is effectively an inner join. There are also methods for doing a left outer join, a right outer join, and a full outer join. Um, we'll just talk briefly about the, the join itself. So once again, I'm going to join with another RDD same key type, different value type. So in many ways, this sounds a lot like a uh, cogroup. The difference is in what it returns. With cogroup, each key will only appear once in the output, and we get iterables 
of all of the results. Joins though, the key will potentially appear many times and each one has one value from the first RDD and one value from the second RDD and you get all possible combinations of those. So note that if keys appear many times in both collections, joins are going to grow multiplicatively. So, so be careful with that. The difference between an inner join, the left join, the right join, and the outer join is that in the normal join, you only get values that had where that key appeared in both the first RDD and the second RDD. So if there's both a V and a W. Left outer joins, it only gives you things that definitely appear in the first operand, but not necessarily in the second. So we get an option here. Right outer join would be an option of V and a W. And the full outer join is an option option. Um, so what can we do with this? Oh, one other method, which I find quite handy, is the subtract by key. Here again, you pass it a, another RDD the values from that RDD aren't used at all, but any keys that appear in this second RDD are taken out, and so you get an RDD that results from removing all of the, the keys that had appeared uh, in, in some other RDD. It's, it's very handy for, for certain situations. Uh, the thing that's interesting to note is it really doesn't use the data from the second RDD in any way, shape, or form. It's just the keys that matter for it. So to illustrate the use of these and how we would get one of these pair RDDs, I'm going to do an aggregate by key in order to get the average temperature by year on our data set. So we have our, let's see, here's after our standard deviations, we have data. Now, once again, data is a is an RDD of uh, of our temp data. So what I would like to do I'll call this keyed by year. I want to take that data and I'm going to map it so that for every one of my temp datas I want the year and then the entire thing. Okay, so now this is an RDD of int and temp data. By having it as an RDD of tuples, I can now use the methods that were in the pair RDD functions, for example, aggregate by key. And that will, for everything that's in the same year, it'll do the aggregation on it. So val average temps by year would simply be equal to our keyed by year dot aggregate by key. The zero value here, uh, we've done this before. I want to calculate an average. So I need both a sum and a count. So for the sum, I am going to start at 0.0. .0. For the count, I am going to start at zero. Our sequential operation takes the aggregator function, which I'm going to go ahead and use the case notation here so I can pattern match on this. It's going to take two arguments. The first argument is my aggregate, so it itself is a tuple. I'll call it sum and count. And the second one is a temperature data. And what do I want to do with this? Well, I want to give back a new tuple of the aggregate type, sum plus the maximum temperature here, comma, the count plus one. So basically I'm just adding in this, the data from this temp data element into our tuple. For the second function, in this case, I'm again going to use my case notation because this one, each argument, is itself a two-tuple. 
So I have one, two, the first is a sum and a count, and the second is a sum of two, S2 and C2. This one's actually fairly easy to do. In fact, I'll probably take out that new line. I want a new one that is S1 plus S2 and C1 plus C2. I get a new tuple there. That combines two of these tuples, so I have total counts. And this gives me average temperatures by year. We'll look at them real quick in text, and then we'll come back and we'll revisit this. Uh, so average temps by year for each print line. Instead of collecting it, I'll use the for each. As we've seen previously, these will come back to me in whatever order. We won't worry about that here. We just want to see how this works. Also, this is going to be quite a bit of data because this data set runs from the 1800s. There's over 100 years of data. So this is going to print out something like 100 lines for me there in random order. You can see if I scroll through it, indeed, I have quite a bit of data for that. The plots popped up that we don't care about. And there we go. Okay. Uh, and of course, these are just sums and counts. We didn't divide out yet. So these aren't actually averages. Uh, we'll come back. We want to get the averages and I'd like to plot them so that we can, can see something about what's happening over time.